Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more seconds uh, for everyone to uh, to settle in for today's uh, informative and interactive uh, webinar. Also, some general housekeeping items. This is a recorded webinar. So in case if you have to step out, answer a phone call, um, by all means, uh, all participants will be able to receive today's presentation and also the recording from our presentation as well. So definitely encourage you to like, subscribe our YouTube channel as we have a plethora of a library of previous recorded webinars, presentations to enhance your business needs um, for when you'll be able to meet with our business consultants. Also, if you have some questions, I encourage you to put them in the Q&A and throughout today's uh, presentation, we'll be more than happy to, to, um, to answer those questions on your behalf. Also, this is a good opportunity for you to introduce yourself in regards of what type of business you have, what type of business venture um, you have, and uh, we'll be more than happy to um, coordinate some of those ideas towards your business needs. Okay. So um, I just, based on the random um, consensus, uh, do we have any small business owners, any aspiring entrepreneurs, what type of business venture you're interested to launch? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Jesus Padilla, small business are perfect. Your own consulting firm. Okay, I like it. All right, so uh, once again, I wanna thank you all for attending today's webinar. My name is Jesus Padilla. I am the manager of administrative services here at the Florida SBDC at FIU under the FIU College of Business. Um, a brief description of what is the uh, Florida SBDC at FIU. We have a team of specialized business consultants to assist small business owners at no cost. Along with the Florida SBDC at FIU, we also work with eight regional centers across the entire state of Florida, from Pensacola all the way down to uh, Key and Monroe County. So if your business is located outside of the Miami-Dade Monroe County, we'll be more than happy to connect you with your local SBDC. But if your business is located in Miami-Dade County, Monroe County, we'll be more than happy to assist you, connect you with the appropriate consultants to address your business needs, the challenges, and also the tools for you to be successful to accomplish your goals for 2024 and moving forward. Some of the services that we provide within the Florida SPDC network is the one-on-one -on -one business consulting, as such here in today's webinar in the startup assistance. But at the same time, if you're looking for access to capital, financial management, international trade, growth strategies, government contracting, but also those data and market research tools that you need to obtain those respected clients that you're seeking, we have consultants that will be able to guide you along with the trainings and workshops as such you're present today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started once again. My name is Jesus Padilla. I am the manager of administrative services here at the Florida SBDC at FIU. A brief description of who I am. Um, I have worked with the Florida SBDC network for over eight years. I have co-consulted in marketing and startup assistance as I am just like you, I have that entrepreneurial spirit. I have provided those innovative tips for entrepreneurs on what would it take to be a successful entrepreneur, start the business. Along, I am a three-time alumnus of FIU with an MBA and a master's in marketing, in which I was recently um, honored as one of America's SBDC's 40 under 40 um, in regards of a recognition from the SBDC staff across the entire national network who demonstrate the innovation, the leadership, and commitment for the SBDC mission. Oftentimes, I have um, small business owners, clients, um, colleagues asking me, what is my why? My why is simple. It is to assist you, the small business owners, and to start and successfully launch their businesses to create that economic impact in the community. Everyone has their mission, their, their reasoning why um, in everyday life in terms of why to start their business, but this is my why. So we'll be discussing two different objectives. One of them is discuss the entrepreneurship, what it makes um, you um, as a successful entrepreneur, along turning those strategies to turn into an, an idea um, into a business, along with the, those actionable steps and key resources to start your business the right way. Just full disclosure, I am not a, an accountant, I'm not a legal, 
So not all information that will be discussed today will be um, provided, but um or covered, but definitely encourage you to touch base with your legal professional based on the tax obligations for your new business venture and also any additional items that uh, will be more suited in the legal or accountant route. So oftentimes everyone starts in different methods. It's just a random idea from a piece of paper or based on having that experience. Um, we'll be going over where to start in, in having those four key walls to have a successful business, just like a simple house. You wanna build the four walls, you wanna amplify the field, so you could get those four walls and have a good, strong foundation. It's overwhelming how to start your own business. So in the chat, I want to know about your experience. How was it like starting your business? Was it based on the experience? Was it the knowledge, um, the trade? Or was it given to you based on uh, multi-generational business? Okay, so I have one that message me that it was more towards the experience and wanted to have their their business okay one was a uh, family owned business perfect okay so entrepreneurship is defined as the activity of setting up a business or businesses that take on that financial risk in terms for the whole for profit so by definition entrepreneurs are risk takers uh, part of this presentation is talking about um, how to take that risk but at the same time be more calculated risk Entrepreneurs launch businesses for many reasons. It could be the opportunity, the, the hope for profit, the independence, the challenge. Me personally, I I took the risk to have my um a one of my businesses is to have that work-life balance so I could take my wife for vacation. That is the reason why I took that opportunity. So in the chat, if you want to talk about why you're taking that risk and what are some of your reasons why you're starting your business venture. Okay, I have one right here for work-life balance. Independence, yep. Yep. Yep, the better for the families, yeah, exactly. I completely agree. And at the same time, um, to be successful, you have to have that um, several factors to be self-directed, action-oriented, highly energetic. Imagine if you're buying something from someone and someone says, hi, my name is Jesus. Would you like to purchase my pen? That's not going to have the high energy. That's not going to sell you. It's like, hi, it's back to school. And we need, you know, you need to have good pens so you could be up to date, take notes, so you can be successful and get those straight A's. You know, this is the pen that will be able to assist you. And, you know, perhaps with that energy, you'll be able to be successful um, based on how to sell. But at the same time, have on tolerance of uncertainty. So look what has happened in the last three years. The understanding what is the market is dictating will be able for you to understand what your consumers are behaving, the, having that consumer behavior for them, what they're saying and how you're able to pivot and adapt. Because sometimes some clients, they were able to, they were not moving based on what the clients are dictating and they may have failed. But if they're telling you we need blue pens because it's lasts longer, it's easier on the papers and easier in the eyes, right there you're able to adapt and assist them based on what they're seeking. But look what's happened in the last three years from the pandemic. If you didn't know what was going on, you would not be able to adapt and pivot to new markets because some of your existing customers may not longer be there in that marketplace. Another opportunity for you is three different areas where you could learn about entrepreneurship. It is to learn from others, get some experience, and take over a successful firm. Learning from others, you're here today in today's presentation. But at the same time, network with other colleagues to or folks in the industry to get to know what's the good and bad, the ugly of managing a business. But if there's a particular industry or field that you would like to go into, get some experience. Get to know who are the, the the key players, who are the the players, um, the vendors, the suppliers, the operations. But at the same time, 
taking over a successful firm, you could serve an apprentice, eventually take over once the owner steps down. You could even purchase a franchise. That's another opportunity for you to be successful. How to turn those ideas into opportunities? These are the five key questions you need to be asking yourself. Is there a market need? Is it scalable? Will it generate profit? How is that window of opportunity? Is it sustainable? So let's use an example, beepers. Is there a market need to have beepers to this marketplace? Is it scalable? Will it be generating profit? How's that window of opportunity? Is it opening? Is it closing? Is it just right, like the Goldilocks approach? Or is it sustainable that it's going to continue moving, that there's going to be continued demand? This would have been successful if it was 30 years ago. But nowadays, you hardly see any beepers. So that's one thing you need always have to have in mind based on how is your business model going to be taking place? How is the market need, the scalability, will it generate profit? Along with the window opportunity, or is it sustainable? At the same time, you don't have to recreate something new or new product or service from scratch. Some of the most successful companies didn't, didn't create them themselves. They brought those new strategies, those innovations for that overall existing marketplace. Just like the traditional examples of Amazon's with the bookstores, Nike with the athletic apparels, the iPhones and mobile, mobile phones. This is where some of your strategy has to be into consideration. You don't need to invent something new as offer lower cost, but at the same time, if it's an already existing market, identify those competitive weakness and those market opportunities. What is your competitive advantage based on that consume, um, uh, the comp um, com competitive advantage on that analysis that you have identified? Oftentimes we might say we're the best product or we have the best prices, but at the same time it's the perception of what is the quality of the brand if you Price it way too low. Also, um, in the chat, I'll be more happy to, um, you know, have this conversation. Do you have a business idea that will disrupt the marketplace? Or you could give me a thumbs up in case if you want to disclose the, um, the business idea. Okay, I have one right here based on technology wise. Yep, good job. Yep. Okay, fairly routine. That's perfectly fine. Now you have to find that niche of a, of a business model to get those ideal clients that you're looking for. Okay. So obviously at first when we and started with today's presentation, we talked about the four key walls. So these are four key walls to start your business the right way. We talked about the idea phase. Now let's start implementing those um, planning stages so we could focus on the financial aspect and then eventually launching the business. So think of it, these are the four key walls of your house, the four key walls of your small business. Now, before we turn your idea into a successful business, you need to conduct a proper action. The key actions is understanding your market, developing that business model, and creating that business plan. We'll go more in depth in the next few slides of these three key action items, but you need to understand who is your market, who are you going to be selling to, what are their behaviors, what do they like, don't like, are you going to be selling them at the right location? But at the same time, what's your business model? Is it going to be subscription-based? Is it going to be more delivery-based? Um, and also creating a business plan. It's um, that's where we have a lot of our clients are in, entrepreneurs. That's where they get turned off. They don't, they don't, they lose track of um, successfully converting their business idea into a business based on developing the business plan. But don't worry, we have consultants that can guide you through the process so you can have an effective business plan as well. And we're also going to be having some upcoming workshops in developing your business plan as well. By understanding your market, you need to know who are the customers or consumers with unsatisfied wants and needs who have both the resources and the willingness to buy from you. As an entrepreneur, you should set out to fill out the market needs by offering the top quality with a great service at a great price. 
you as a small business owner, you're able to know what the market wants and you're able to adapt quickly. So think of it as a small business owner, as a canoe. It's easy to make a three-point turn in a canal to go where the market is dictating versus a cruise ship making that three-point turn to go to the marketplace. So by adapting quickly, you're able to solidify yourself with one of the key players in that evolving um, competitive marketplace. When I was doing my MBA, I had to select a business and I selected 7-Eleven. Why? Because I definitely loved how the founder of 7-Eleven understood the customer, understood the market. And he, he said, give the customers what they want, when and where they want it. Look at the United States. The United States, it is grab snacks, drinks, everyday products on the go. But look at Indonesia. It's a trendy hotspot where young people surf the web, spend time, meet with friends, and surf the web. But look at Taiwan. That is where you're able to service your bicycle, photocopy, just like a, like a Kinko's, no more or less. But these are the three, there are three different countries, three different markets, and they're successful in those three different locations by understanding the consumers. So if I tell my friends, hey, let's go and hang out 7-Eleven so we could you know, spend time, they're going to say, hey, Jesus, we love you, but hang out with your friends or hang out with new people because we're not going to be hanging out at 7-Eleven. So have a, have a good understanding of that market. Um, you'll be able to understand what the consumers want, when, and where they want it. Also, you're able to work with existing businesses, networking once again with peers in the industry. But at the same time, if you don't have those key aspects and those access to that data, don't worry. We have consultants that can assist you with the market research and industry research as well. At the same time, you can utilize the free public databases that the, uh, the U.S. Census Bureau, the Federal Reserve, the Department of Labor has to offer. Also, um, everyone's going to be receiving today's presentation. So there's going to be some helpful links in terms of how to do a market research, have a good competitive analysis. But at the same time, how to market your business in the SBA website as well. These are some key factors you need to understand and also always have into consideration of your customer. What is that potential demand? What's the market competition? What are the economic indicators, the pricing, the location? So, for example, I want to open up a daycare. Perfect. There's always a demand for that. But I want to open a daycare in this location because there's no competition. But once you do some research, there is a the population, the demographics is 55 and older communities. So there's not going to be that many fa young families with young children living in that area. As opposed to if you want to do it in the middle of the city of Doral, per se, that is a more younger crowds. There's more family oriented, younger children. So that could be a potential demand. But now let's start focusing on the market competition. How many our daycares are within a three mile radius. So those are your direct competitors. And then those who are, then those are in, within the five, 10 mile radius. Those are your indirect competitors. You're able to see what they're doing, not doing. So you could get a piece of the pie within that small three mile radius. And that focuses on anything like ice cream shop. What is the pricing? Is it too high, too low, or just right? Along with how is your value proposition? That's one key word that we'll be discussing later on. But that is always to have um, a good understanding of your value proposition with understanding your market. And boom, here we go. What is a value proposition? It is that clear and compelling statement on what unique value your company brings to the market. Once again, how do you send out amongst your comp your competitors? This is where you always have to um, um, some questions to ask yourself. What do you offer to the customer? What needs are you satisfying? And how are you different from the competition? Sometimes when we have clients, they ask, they tell me, I'm offering everything to the client. I am the best. I have no competition. Um, I'm satisfying all of their needs. And there's no competition. I am the best. Well, that's great. But now let's let's dive in a little bit more. Let's investigate it further so we can have a good compelling statement as to why people should buy from you. Then secondly, is that go-to-market strategy. It's that step-by-step -step roadmap in getting your product and services to the customers. How is it? Are you going to be shipping them? Are you going to be delivering them? Um, what's the pricing model? Is it seasonal price? Is it going to be a weekly pricing, monthly subscription? But at the same time, it is identifying those target markets that you would like to obtain and retain 
along identifying your, your customer, their behaviors, those similar characteristics, where you could go into new markets as well um, should you decide to expand your business model. Once again, we talked earlier about the business plan. This is where many entrepreneurs lose track when it comes to drafting their business plan, their business, um, their business idea into a business plan. Understand that you need to focus on who is going to be your audience. If it's going to be potential key partners, investors, even the day-to-day -day business operations, you have to have a specific business plan for those characteristics as the action that you intend to do. Once again, do not let the idea of drafting a business plan delay your opportunity to move forward. I don't want you to be, you know, let stress be outside, but you'll be more happy to work with us. Um, reshape those ideas, let's put it on paper, and let's see what we could do to assist you with your business needs once again. Okay, so let's again, let's focus on how, how you could get your idea out of your head onto the page. But the good thing is the business model canvas can also help you create that outline so you can do a plug and play of your business plan. Granted, it does not replace a business plan, but it can assist you to have those key components of what a business plan entails onto the business model canvas. As such, who are the key activities? What is your value proposition? The customer relationships, segments, what's your cost structure? So everything that consists of a business plan, you could definitely put it in the business model canvas and then enhance it, elaborate more in depth towards your business plan. Understand who you're, who you're telling your, your, your audience in your business plan. It doesn't have to be a very complex, like 50 pages. You could definitely do it within, you know, five to 10, but at the same time, it's get um, an executive summary to catch the reader's interest, to join the potential bankers, partners, investors, and also, Discuss about what are your goals for the next three to five years. That is the narrative. Because once again, that is a living, breathing document of your business goals and what you like to accomplish within a short-term and long-term goals. The third, the third wall of the house is the financing. You need to know how much it's going to be your startup expenses. Determine if it's going to be whether a business in, as a bricks and mortar, a service, or online. This is where you're able to list them, have a line item in regards of the office space, how much it's going to cost, what's the inventory, the equipment, the licensing. Um, but at the same time, breaking them up if they're going to be a one-time expense or monthly expenses. Also the fixed and variable expenses along with the uh, calculate if it's going to be at least one year of monthly expenses, but also projected from three to five years, which is even better. The good thing is that the SBA website has a fillable spreadsheet that can use as a template. Um, this document is available on the presentation, but also on the SBA website as well. So once again, everyone is receiving today's presentation. So you don't have to worry about um, taking a screenshot um, in regards of what I have present right now. This is where you're able to um, determine how you're going to get those capital. Most businesses, they start bootstrapping, which is the best way to fund, but at the same time, retain the ownership and control over the direction of the business. Uh, be aware that what we talked about earlier about having those calculated risks. Be aware that if you're not careful, you assume all the risk um, and impacts your personal finances and could delay your retirement if you're not careful. In addition, um, some other sources of capital includes the family and friends and fools, mission-based lenders, the government agencies, um, banks and finance companies, some CDFIs. Um, at the same time, if you're looking for crowdfunding, angel investors, venture capitalists, those are other options of capital as well. Like I said, no two businesses are the same, no two industries are the same. Um, so it is a good opportunity for you to meet with our consultants to see which is the best alternative for you to obtain the necessary capital and the amount for your business venture. In addition, this is one of the last steps in terms of incorporating your business 
Um, it is um, the four major forms of business ownership is a sole proprietor, which is a business owned, usually managed by one person. While the partnership is for two or more people legally agreed to become the co-owners of a business, just like think of it like as a marriage. But then at the same time, a corporation is a legal entity with authority to act and have liability apart from its owners. And one of the most common ones is the LLC, which is it's a protection from the owner from personal liability for any debts the business incurs. So, for example, makeup. Who loves makeup? For example, my wife loves makeup. But if I decide to put on makeup and I get an allergic reaction, I would like to know where is the LLC? Like, can I sue the business or the business owner? So having that protection, I, you know, that the, the business owner from the makeup manufacturer will be able just to focus on the debts of the business, not their own personal uh, liability. And I believe that one of my one of my great colleagues, he is um, he is present today and uh, he'll be more than happy to talk more in depth of the of the four major business um, entities and we'll elaborate more. Uh, Frederick, are you on by any chance? Okay. So once he logs, um, once he, um, when he's available, we'll be able to go back to this particular slide. And also once you fully um, get the name of your business in terms of launching your business, um, this is where you're able to start having understanding what type of business structure is best suited for you. Once again, this is where you'll be able to speak with your attorney, accountant, um, in regards of the pros and cons, what factors that is needed for each of those entities. Because once again, no two businesses, no two industries are the same. This is the one key area that I definitely would love for you to check first if you're looking to start your business. Search if your business name is available on some business. Um, because oftentimes we have clients that they develop their website first and then they start registering the business name and it's already occupied. Then you have to start from scratch. But at the same time, you want to make sure that your business name is unique because if you have a similar business name, there might be the perception that what is the business practice and the business ethics of that similar business name. So you don't want to be associated with a business that may have done illegal things or or bad business practice. So it's about the reputation. So Strongly encourage you to research the business name, have a unique name, um, so that it's it's crystal clear, um, from and and at the same time, the website also has um additional sort of resources, legal forms, business regulations, um, to assist you in case if you're interested to establish a fictitious name for your business where at where it's actable. Also. Obtaining the EIN, it is an opportunity for you to register the business entity, obtain business loans, open a business bank account, and it's needed for tax filing and reporting purposes. Um, so this is a good opportunity for you to have that EIN. Think of it as a social security number for your business. In addition, the um, definitely encourage you to Obtain the local business tax receipt, which is a certificate of use in the municipality, what licensing and permits that is needed in each of the respective municipalities where your business is, is located. This will definitely have everything in compliance. Make sure that you're fully in business registered in the respected city and county. So definitely um, you can meet with our team and we'll be able to assist you to see which permits and licensing that you needed. Also, the Florida SPDC Network has um, a six part startup webinar series that can assist you with the fundamentals with an overview of what it takes to start a business. But at the same time, um, as I started earlier, the YouTube channel, what we have is a, it's a library of on-demand um, workshops, informations of startup, government contracting, marketing, um, that, that is around 30 to 45 minutes at length and definitely encourage you to like, subscribe our YouTube channel. In addition, right here are some additional resources to enhance your business needs as a checklist. Um, in terms of how to develop a business plan, we have some websites. Also, the uh, how to search how to, your business name, how to start your business on some business, which is the state of Florida. But at the same time, 
what are some business regulations here in the state along with starting your business? What permits is needed in the county? So since I since we're in the holidays and we're in effective, effective uh, festive mood, I want to give you the secret sauce. It's my secret. I want to give it to you as my holiday treat. I want to give you uh, some homework and it'll be like a 13 point checklist um, to make sure the how to make your business legit. If you have a business name, let's choose one. Choose the business address. My recommendation, have an enhanced um, business address because in the state of Florida with the, with the SunBiz, it is a public domain. So anyone could go, if you decide to register your business name under your home address, it's public entity, people could be knocking on your door. So having an, an enhanced business address in which our business consultants can assist you in that regard, um, right there, you're able to be protecting from any business operations with your personal operations. Uh, create a look, um, your business entity. If it's gonna be a partnership, a sole proprietorship, is it gonna be a corporation? Um, along with registering your business, getting those licensing and permits that is needed, along with the EIN. If you already done so already, by all means, let's check them off. So that we're able to assist you with those key items that is pending to, once again, make your business legit. Have that business bank account. If you haven't done so, we could be more happy to assist you um, getting a micro loan or consider getting a business credit card, establishing that business credit, getting the Duns and Bradstreet number, setting up your books, having that those key concepts, those understandings of your financial management, like your income statement, your, your cash flow statements, your P&Ls, create a website. What's your marketing strategy? Is it going to be folk, um, having two websites if you want to do one for commercial and private and one in the government contracting sector? So by having this conversation, we'll be able to assist you in developing that website and what digital marketing strategies you need to put for the um for the branding and messaging. Get a get a business phone number, but then at the same time, register your business with online services. So having a good opportunity for you to make sure that all of these areas are, you know, we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's to make sure that everything's a good standing for the next phase and the growth of your business, which is opening the doors and obtaining the necessary clients to create that economic impact in the community. So definitely uh, those are the, the, the 13 steps to make your business legit, but at the same time, definitely encourage you to contact us, visit us our website, give us a call, shoot us an email, but at the same time, follow us on our social media channels. That's where we have upcoming events that we'll be hosting, that we'll be participating in the community Definitely encourage you to to follow us. Also contact us. You know we serve as strangers. We're leaving as family. So anything that we can do to assist with your business needs, we'll be more than happy to assist you with any way we can. And before I open up the 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 floor for any questions that one might have, definitely I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar. If you're interested to meet with our business consultants, strongly encourage you to um, scan the QR code. But also in the chat, there is a link to register for consultation along with um, um, definitely um, register for some of the events that we have for 2024 and uh, we'll be more happy to assist you uh, with any way we can. So if there's any particular questions, I'll be more happy to answer them right now. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Guillermo. And that, uh, thank you, Guillermo. And then, uh, yeah, so then um, once again, if um, if your name was already in the chat of uh, Leonardo Duarte, um, unfortunately, there was um, there was a glitch in the system. Please provide me your first and last name um, so I could provide you the information. With the um with the YouTube link, the presentation. But at the same time, I want to send you a personalized email on how you could contact me, connect with me, um, so we could schedule the meeting with you. And um, yes, I did receive an email right now. Uh, yes, uh, the presentation it is going to be recorded, and our participants will be um, um, uh, receiving the presentation. Correct, and uh, and it's no cost business consulting for you, as uh, we're funded through the SBA. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we'll be setting an appointment with for in Bradenton. Yes. Um for the Bradenton, um, just email me, which I put in the chat, which is jpadilla at fiu.edu. And I'll be more than happy to connect you with my colleagues from the Florida SBDC at USF. And I'll be more happy to make that introduction um for you. Okay. And yes, um, no, de nada. And yes, uh, we also have consultants that speak Spanish as well that can assist you with your um, business venture. Um, we have um, um, we have consultants that speak multiple languages, so we'll be more happy to assist you within that regard. Okay. Yep. Yes, and also last question that I received right now is yes, um, not only startup assistance, but we also have um, marketing workshops, access to capital workshops, English and Spanish. Um, along with government contracting as well. So pretty much we have consultants that focuses on the different aspects of what small business entails. We have a specialist consultant that can guide you through that process as well. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yep. I have already answered all the questions, but like I said, anything that we can do to assist you with your business needs, don't hesitate. We're an email, a phone call, an event away to, um, to connect with you with any way we can. So I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar. I want to thank Carmen, Lorna, Frederick, and Leo in the and Le, or Leos in today's uh, presentation. Um, but definitely anything we can do to assist you, we're we're here to guide you. I want to wish you and your family a good holiday season, and I'll see you at the next webinar. Take care, everyone.